Welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. My name's Mark, and Tara is in need of a new wagon. So the other wagon, the wheels on it, the bearings had worn out, so I'm going to have to take a look at that, see if I can uh, repair that, uh, replace the bearings in it, whatnot. Uh, but this wagon works out really well. It's a tipping wagon, so you can take it right into the building, you can scoop into it, and then haul it right out. Uh, so it works really well. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Carl uh, did in the uh, did in the last tire or the one tire that was on top uh, by, of course, doing what he does and uh, using his horns to rub on things and break things. Uh, so uh, it's sitting out there now, and we'll get this together and uh, we'll see how it works out. So they never make these things easy. Uh, there's two bolts here which on the diagram number 11 says there's actually five of them. Uh, but in the diagram it shows it's held together with three of them and this one is only two. Uh, and then of course there's another two which is number 12 which is some thicker hex bolts and there's two of them and they go in the struts over here. But of course in the description it says we use number 11's here and number 11's here. All right, we're done. We don't have any leftover parts, and all the holes are plugged in here. So uh, it, uh, it had to have been a, a flaw from, they probably upgraded the design of the unit, and of course, didn't update the instructions. Uh, so it's a nice little unit here. This uh, is a, a dump system. So you can dump whatever you load in, uh, and it's a lot more stable than your standard wheelbarrow. So uh, we'll have to check out and see if this will fit through. Another nice thing that our last one didn't have is this here. This pin comes out and the handle actually comes up and you can hook this up to your riding lawnmower uh, and pin it and then drag it behind. So that's kind of a neat function. So I'm just heading out to the barn to get some rabbit food which we're feeding the chinchillas which are in the basement. Uh, we're out. Uh, Tara's pretty sick today, so I've been uh, doing a few things like laundry since our septic field froze uh, I've had to do it into a pail and then dump it out the back uh, So here is Manya. Say hello Manya. How are you doing? We put her uh, we left her out here just because we were a little concerned with her uh, in here, especially the pigs. She was turning around and rearing at the pigs. Were you being a naughty girl? Hey, were you? Yeah. So we've got her in this area here, uh, in this outside enclosure in front of the house. Uh, so she's been hanging out here. She is close to them, so she can see them, she can check them out. Uh, and the pigs may have a home to go to. Uh, so we'll uh, find out more on that. Tara had mentioned that there was somebody uh, of interest. So I'm going to go in, and I've had a couple people interested in uh, care for the pigeons. Actually, pigeons and doves. Hi, Tinker. Um, but of course, we don't have dog, doves. We've got pigeons. There's Turbo. Hey, bud. What is it? Oh, and Lambert, how fluffy you look. Hey, bud. <laughs> and everybody else. Oh, here's that other wagon. So you can see down here, uh, that bearing's gone right on there. So this one's, this one's still on. Tara says there's a few of them that are off. Uh, but uh, it's a matter of replacing the bearing on it. And, well, we've got the other wagon now that is a little bit uh, wider. But we'll see how it fits through the door. Looks like we have about a quarter inch to spare, right, Barry? <laughs> All right, there's Blackie eating away. Where are the pigs anyway? I hear them. Oh, there they are. Oh, no, don't get up, guys. You guys stay in bed. I don't want to disturb you. <laughs> All right, so the pigeons. How's everybody doing in here? How is everybody doing? Fernando? Lucy? And you guys are always so happy. So the pigeons are in here. So let's go in the cage and I'll set up in there. 
Okay, now for the fun part. To catch a pigeon. Sometimes it's easy. Well, sometimes it can be more of a challenge. Usually you have to... So if we go over this way... Oh, there we go. I got you. Are you tagged? You're not tagged. Alright. So, this is a pigeon. I'm not sure what sex it is. There's a few white ones, and of course some of them are tagged. We tag them with blue tags, foot tags, and pink foot tags. And we've tried to keep them, uh, the numbers the same. So a pair will have the same number, so 14. Uh, and they do stick with a mate. So this one here, what you want to do is flip it over to find out its sex. Now you have to flip it over. Now my fingers are quite a bit larger. If you lie them, if you have them upside down, they'll tend to be more relaxed. Uh, and if you slide your finger down, you can feel the pubic bone in there. So my, my finger can slide just barely in between that pubic bone. So this is actually a female. Now, another way to tell is, whoops, come here, come here, girl. Another way to tell is when they're sitting. So we've pulled eggs out of a lot of the nests because they're just, they're having too many young. Um, this is a good amount. We don't need any more at the moment, and they'll just keep on having babies. So um, how you tell otherwise, or how we tell otherwise, is uh, when they're in their nest. So when they're sitting on the eggs, the males will sit during the day, and the females will generally sleep at night, or sit at night. Uh, now, in an environment like this that's inside, no outside windows of any kind, we do have a light for the chickens. So when it comes on, on a timer, comes on in the morning and shuts off in the evening. So they do have that kind of cycle of light so they, they don't get all mixed up. Okay, you wanna go? You wanna go? All right, ready? There you go. Oh, as she poops on my foot. Yeah, well, at least it wasn't in my hands. <laughs> uh, so here, you should be able to see uh, maybe not. I don't know. Oh, yeah, up there. So here you can see the blue band. So that's a male. Uh, and it's just a nice, easy way to tag them. Uh, we have to tag a bunch more. We kind of uh, got a little sloppy on that and, and didn't uh, didn't do any. I don't even, I actually don't even see any females. They're probably, well, those should be males, both down there. Uh, so let's actually have a look at that. We'll just set this up here, and let's see. Oh, you got eggs. You're untagged. You have a tag? No, actually, neither one of them are tagged, uh, but they would both be males. These were really... We're really gonna have to get on that, eh guys? Start tagging you guys. And of course, then there's Prince and Princess and uh, his other girl. So they're up there and Prince's tail is coming along nicely. Yeah. So one of the other questions we get is, well, of course, how to care for them. They are very easy to care for. You wanna make sure that uh, you keep a nice breeding pair in an enclosure. Uh, we have lost a lot of them to crows, to predators in the past. Uh, so having a breeding pair, and they wiped us completely out. So uh, we do have a little door outside that they can fly out and the peafowl can't get out. So they eat what everybody else eats. Well, all the chickens anyway. And what we've done here is I have showed this in another video, but this is simply some furnace ducting. Uh, and it goes up into the wall cavity. I'll show you the other side in a minute. And we fill it up. I think it fills up to about there and it slowly just works its way down. So they always have feed available here. Uh, we also give them over here, we give them some kelp, which is basically seaweed, so they're protein. And then oyster shells in here for their calcium. Uh, and so they can break down their food. Right, buddy? <laughs> So that's pretty much about it. Now, nesting boxes, we've used these here, and these you can pick up at a hardware store. It's just a tool 
organization bins or you know things you what uh, you store your nuts and bolts in kind of thing pick those up you screw them onto the edge and they work out pretty good we did make this one up here uh, put it together but really it's more work than it's uh, worth it is kind of cute but these bins work just as well so that is the okay can I talk buddy <laughs> This is the pigeon area, and right on the other side where I pointed out the feeder, uh, you can see here is a piece of plexiglass, and we just mounted that into the wall cavity. So looking in here, there's the feed, and we just scoop it into this area here, and it uh, automatically feeds through with gravity. Pretty simple. You try to make space whenever you can. So here we've got three feed bins sitting um, underneath a couple pieces of wood. So it makes great shelf. Uh, so organizing, which is something we're gonna have to do. Uh, we have all of our uh, equipment, uh, heat lights and waters and everything all stored out here. Uh, what we're gonna have to do is maybe pick up some plastic totes uh, so that we store those in and either keep them out here or keep them in the shop or uh, we're planning on building an addition out this door here, just basically uh, an overhang onto the roof, a roof extension. Uh, so maybe make some shelving up there. It doesn't have to be warm. Uh, but here is our chinchilla food. So what we're feeding our chinchillas uh, is the same thing rabbits get, is a rabbit food, a rabbit pellet. And uh, I've mentioned this before as well. If you're going out and you've got, you know, uh, animals that require this type of food, it's an alfalfa pellet, then uh, don't buy it in the city. Uh, go to the country, go to a feed store, and you can pick this stuff up for uh, a lot cheaper. Of course, pet, pet stores have overhead. Uh, they have employees, they have rights, they have rent to pay in malls and stores uh, and of course they have to charge more and that's how they make their money but a feed store sells it in bulk just like if you were to go to uh, Costco let's say and buy a big pack of toilet paper uh, your per roll price per toilet paper is gonna be a lot cheaper than if you went to your local gas station and bought a two roll uh, toilet paper uh, so always uh, look around for feed and a good place to look is start looking for uh, feed suppliers. I've had a lot of people asking about farm tours. You know, can you show your whole farm? Uh, well, I have, and I tr I'm trying to do spring, fall, winter, and summer farm tours. Uh, in the winter, it's uh, not quite as much of coverage as, uh, as in the summertime, just because everybody is closer to the building. In the summertime, I head out and go around the back and do a walk and hunt for everybody and find out where everybody's hanging out. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll put a link up in the corner for uh, one of the farm tours. So if you are interested in, uh, in finding out what, uh, what's all on the property, what we have, uh, click that link above. So I'm going to go inside now with my chinchilla food and uh, get them some food and uh, we're gonna head back out a little bit later and do a shutdown. And that was something else that people were asking about is how do you shut your animals down? Well it's 8 30 time to shut down the animals. Uh, it's nice uh, in the summertime because well it's still light out here till like 10 30 at night but uh, this time of year about five o'clock it starts to get dark. So, anyway, let's go inside. Ooh, okay, so the first thing we need to do is check our waters. So we have our uh, water system here with the heat trace in it. Okay, so there's one. There's two. And there's three jugs. Uh, so these ones I usually fill up the waters inside uh, and then the larger one here we use outside for the ducks. Fill so this container up. All right, so we got that one. All right, time to check everybody's water. 
Okay, so Lucy's water is good. And the rabbit's water is good. We'll check these guys over here out in a minute. Let's go back here. How are you guys doing? Now, Muscovy ducks, or ducks in general, uh, we don't give them all the water that they want because they're just going to play in it. Right, guys? So we usually give them about half a jug of water and uh, we check it in the morning as well. So they get it in the morning and then in the evening. Okay, how's the girls doing back here? They have lots of water. And looks like we'll have to go into the guineas and get them some water. Just clean that out. And it looks good. There we go. Some nice fresh water in there. And uh, food is usually checked in the morning, so pretty much uh, just do water in the evening. They've got some hay here, and they're almost done their tree that we gave them uh, a couple weeks ago, I guess. And now for the chickens and oh, oh, chickens and some ducks. These chickens try to escape when I come in. So we give these guys, it is a, a water container, but uh, instead of opening it up all the time, they drain it out pretty good. So we just pour a full jug in here, and uh, they'll drink that right down. We probably don't even need the floater in there, but it kind of slows the ducks down in, uh, in drinking it. And this is, we had uh, this one named, so this male Muscovy here is Josh, uh, and it was because we have one named Drake. <laughs> so Drake and Josh uh, is a popular Nickelodeon uh, TV show. So we thought, well, that was cute. All right, moving along, we'll grab another container here and we'll check on the peafowl. Can you move out of the way, bud? Thank you. It's always wanting to get in the way, that turkey. Uh, and these guys look pretty good too. So this container, oh yeah. Let's drain that out, clean that out a little bit. There we go. Everybody's good in here. And of course, uh, feed is excellent in there. Okay, Lucy likes to sneak in. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> And we'll just close, close that off. All right, so let's go check on these rabbits here. Oh. It's hard to do with one hand holding the camera. How are you doing, buddy? Spot? How's Spot doing? Looks like you knocked your water over, didn't you? Why am I trying to fill up the water with the camera? No, you stay in, Spot. Let's close this up here. Trying to do too many things at once. All right, there we go. And this is a, you know, they're just these neat little uh, containers here. You can slide it in just like that. Uh, and the handle fits really good on there. There you go. Oh, are you thirsty? Okay, and who else here? How are you guys doing over there? You guys have some, no, you need a little bit of water in there too. Whoa, watch your nose, watch your nose. There you go. <laughs> and you guys have your food here. Chewing on my shoe and the box. Looks like that's their little toy there. And they've got water there. Okay, everybody looks good. So our feed here now, uh, everybody's feed was good, so I didn't have to give them anything. Uh, I won't have to give anything to the ducks, because they've got two feeders outside, but I will go in and give them water. Uh, but I just wanted to run down on the feed. Uh, now Tara made up this neat little card here. So it goes and it talks about everything we feed. Now the only thing that we've changed on it 
is here in this area here where it says canola feed uh, or canola seed. Uh, we don't give them as much now. We may give them a little bit, but we found studies that giving canola oil or canola cracked seed to chickens actually lowers their output of eggs. So it was an interesting study. We were giving it to them because of the omega, I believe it's omega nines, that the uh, canola oil benefits. So of course you want to find that nice ratio in there. Uh, now this mix we did last spring, I think it was. We went and we actually mixed all these whole grains into this kind of a formula and then we sent it off to a lab and had it analyzed, compared that analyzed lab report with the tag that's on the feed that you would generally buy for, uh, for chicken feed. Uh, and everything came out uh, good or better with the exception of proteins so and calcium actually calcium and proteins. So then what we do is we give them the kelp and we also have fish meal that we add into the mix during the winter time. We don't have to do that during the summer uh, just because they get their bug source outside. They get their protein when they're outside. Uh, but in the winter time, yes, that's something that we need to do. Now also with the calcium, we've added uh, oyster shells and ground up egg shells. So that's what we use whenever we cook eggs inside, we crush them up, uh, we put them into a container and then we come up, we put them into those containers out there. Uh, so that's how the feed works. And now for the outside animals. So we don't use a, we don't use a heater in here. As you can see, that's pretty solid. <laughs> so we go through this kind of every, uh, oh, that's pretty heavy. I'm going to put down the camera here. Uh, I'll put it down right there. Hopefully nobody knocks it down on me. So I will take this container and it's only, uh, it's only about minus, oh, what is, oh, what is that? As soon as you have something in your hand, they're just all over it. Uh, it's only about minus 10, I think, today. Uh, but it freezes up pretty uh, pretty good. So we just take this and chuck it outside here, flip it up upside down. And there we go, we have our container. And the container is now empty. Uh, it was actually a lot of water in it, it was just ice. Yeah, you guys, oh, he thirsty? All right, hang on, bud. Let me get you some water in here. Oops. All right, here you go. Oh, there we go. So I probably don't have to give him as much. I think it was probably ice water on top of ice water that was put on there. You can see from the line up here, uh, it was quite full. So I usually do, you know, one, one of these jugs. And uh, I'll keep, on an, keep an eye on it and them, uh, whenever we come out, just make sure they have, have some. Now this big container here, this is for the ducks. What is going on? Yes, I'll be back in in a minute, bud. Oh, Fernando, so silly. Okay, let's take this out here. And usually what happens is when I bring this out, of course, everybody's got to check on it. So, so, okay, give them a feed. This is the, the mobile watering squad. So they get their drink. Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> I, think they're, I think they're done having a... Barry, you want some water? You want some water, Barry? There you go. Here. Can I have a drink? Oh boy, there you go. Oh, good. Good stuff. All right. You can hear them calling. Out of the way, sheeps. Out of the way. Okay. Here we go. Oh, quacking away. So we needed some light out here. Oh, and the goose is out. Come on, goose, goose. Here. Come on in. Come on in, Goose Goose. There you go. 
Okay, and the sheeps are checking out the water. So curious. Oh no, don't kick the bucket there, bud. Drink it. Okay, water. There you go. There. One there, and then there's another one inside the building. It's cool out there. It's uh, just above freezing in here, which is perfect, perfect for in here. Uh, one thing I didn't mention earlier when I was uh, sexing the pigeons, the reason why you can fit your finger in between the two pubic bones of the female is because those bones need to be wide enough to pass the egg. Uh, I was doing a little bit of uh, editing there uh, a little bit earlier and I thought, oh, well maybe I should add that little clue in there. Uh, so that's it for this week. I think I covered everything. Uh, if there's any questions about uh, what I talked about today, please let me know. And we will see you next week. Have a wonderful week. And if you uh, like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, I've noticed I've been getting quite a few subscribers. Uh, they've been coming up, so that's wonderful. Uh, if you're new to this channel, I thank you for your support. And we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.